Well, welcome back to our channel. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Just got done working on our property all day. We were cutting, cutting wood, cutting beech, uh, striped maple, making some clearings. We planted some briars. Um, but in this video, I want to talk about you know our reasoning for it, not necessarily showing the grunt work. Um, we did that a few times already, showing us hacking down the trees, running the saw. Um, you know, I want to give a little background where we are, what we're doing. Um, you know, and why we're doing what we're doing. Um, you know, we got 11 acres um, in the mountains of Sullivan County in PA. Um, so we're, you know, tucked back in. Um, there's about two, 300 acres adjacent to us um, that's pretty much untouched. There's some guys over there um, that do some work, do some hunting, but for the most part, it's quiet. You know, there's no, no roads cutting across any of the land. Um, we're at the end of a dead end road. We have a cabin, um, and that's at the bottom corner of our property. It kind of sort of makes like a diamond shape. Um, so we're at the bottom corner of that, um, our yard and everything, you know, we come up, we like to hang out too in the summertime and stuff. We do a whole bunch of different stuff. So we do, you know, have a yard and area where we like to hang out. Um, and in total, that probably takes, you know, three quarters of an acre at the bottom here. Um, so up top at the far corner, you know, we probably got eight, nine acres, you know, fairly quiet stuff. Most of it you can't, can't see camp. Um, it goes up to a ridge and then we got another bench that it goes up to. Um, so we're working out at that far corner up at that top area, trying to get that more secluded, get it thicker, um, get some more browse in there, some more cover, um, you know, get the deer to travel it more. There are a fair number of deer over here. There's some good bucks. Um, we've definitely got them on camera. Um, we've seen them, you know, different areas out the dirt road, um, certain food sources. On certain years, you know, we've seen them at apple trees that are close to the road. So we know that there's good deer back here. We know that there's a fair amount of deer. But the key, you know, is to get them to utilize our small property um, more than they do currently. Um, you know, some different guys, some different videos that we watch. You know, it's all, all a numbers game. You know, our deer might utilize, come through our property 5% of the time. And, you know, out of all the deer around, you know, we may only be getting 5 to 10% of the deer that utilize it 5% of the time. Um, so, you know, through the work that we do, taking some trees down, trying to get it thicker, get more food in here for them, maybe we can bump that up to 15% of the deer around or using our property 20 to 30% of the time. And that's just going to increase our odds when we're sitting at a stand, you know, that the good buck's going to walk by or a doe that we want to take um, to fill the freezer is going to walk by at any given time. Um, and the biggest thing, you need food, you need cover, you need water. I mean, everybody says it gets beat to the dirt, but it's a simple fact. That's what you need. Um, here we got a decent sized stream that runs off the backside of our property. Um, we got springs everywhere. There's a pond out the road. So water's covered. You know, we don't worry about that as far as putting in buried troughs and stuff like that that some guys um, do. We're focused on browse and cover. Um, we got a lot of hemlocks. There was a lot of open woods um, when my parents first got it. That was five years ago. So we've been doing stuff um, each season trying to make it a little bit better. We're getting more first succession growth. We are getting some, some pickers, um, some beech, which... We're trying to eliminate that's not a very good browse for deer um and that just you know shades out some other stuff we're really looking for briars um raspberry blackberries uh we you know aren't too crazy about the birch but that is a great um winter very early spring food source for them you know when times are tough we do see them browsing on that um so it's not terrible to have some of those growing up you know to grow up in the waist chest high whips create some cover but basically we're trying to get the beach out and also get the striped maple out they make a huge leaf it could you know a small tree could shade a big area you have nothing growing on the ground um, and usually the deer don't browse on the striped maple once they get above knee height um, you know it gets a little tough for them unless they're you know super hard up they don't go after it so we're trying to eliminate some of those and we want to bring in um, our own plants we want to bring in um, high bush cranberry like i said the the briars raspberries blackberries um 
some hazelnuts. Hopefully we can work on some apple trees. Um, that hasn't been great for us. You know, we didn't get a good jump on pruning those and trying to train those. So we're trying to rehab those that we can get them working for us. But as much browse as we can get in here, um, that's what you need. Especially if you got a property similar to ours. You know, I'd say anything 20 acres or less. You know, you're obviously not going to be harboring a whole lot of deer all the time. You're going to be doing stuff at camp. They're not going to be right bedded up above you. Um, you're going to spook them off just from your normal camp habits, which, you know, that's the reason you got to camp. You're not going to not come up, you know, not do things just because you, you know, could potentially have a deer bedding 50 yards away. You know, you got to figure a way to work around that. We got to cut trees. We got a wood stove. Um, so, you know, that's always in the back of your mind. You got to make noise. Um, but, when we're up hunting season, it's quiet. You know, Friday afternoon, we sneak in, sneak out to the stands. We're quiet Saturday, you know, while we're hunting. And then, you know, go home Sunday and stuff. But if you could get that growth, you need browse. Um, you know, a single deer can take several several pounds um, of feed a day um, to keep them running. And up to 80% of their diet, you know, could be the browse, especially where we are. Um, there's no big ag fields that they're running to. There's no corn fields. There's not even much for clover um, so you know a huge percentage of their diet is browse so the more you can make the more you can keep them feeding on your property maybe a half hour before dark half hour after sunrise or even sneaking through midday to grab a bite um, and when, I'm not saying that you can't put food plots in we think that's a great resource um, that can be a great hunting opportunity we do have small food plots that we try to dot in um, and that can be a great supplemental feed but um, on a small property like this you know those food plots um, we don't quite think are going to be the draw that are going to bring deer in um, from a few hundred yards away or bring deer in in any numbers. You know, that good seven, eight acres of browse that we could bring in, that could definitely be a draw for the deer because that's something that we think isn't in this um, general vicinity. You know, we want to try to create something different, something that another property close to us doesn't have because um, that's going to bring deer to your property. If you can give them something different and a good variety of food. And then along those same lines, that food is going to become cover. Deer never wants to see far. I mean, 20, 30 yards is plenty far for a deer to see to keep it comfortable. Um, you know, if they can stay hidden and only see 20 to 30 yards, they know something can only see them from 20 to 30 yards. They can use their nose, their ears um, to assist them. We do have some thick behind us that we see deer come up fairly consistent, consistently. Um, you know, you look down there, you can't see very far, and that's right where they want to be. Um, they're not utilizing the open areas and if they do have to go through them they're on edge you know they're speeding up and that's not what you want to be hunting you want to be somewhere where they're comfortable they're spending time um, that's going to be you know what you can do to get a good ethical shot um, if they're spending time in front of you or spending time you know within eyesight of your stand and then that cover that's going to help you in rifle season um, you know those deer get spooked from somewhere else they know there's seven eight ten acres you know whatever you could do with your small property of quiet thick cover um they're gonna remember that they get spooked they get shot at from somewhere else they're gonna run into here they're gonna spend some time they're gonna calm down and they're gonna figure out you know what they want to do and then you can be right in that um the same goes for the rut you know doe love to be in thick cover in the rut um they don't want to be in open open areas um they want to be protected there's a buck chasing them you know they're trying to do what they can to evade them a little bit they're going to stay in cover and that's you know your bucks are going to follow so if you can get that you can bring doe in during the rut you're going to bring bucks and it's going to stink you know we got doe feeding around you know you keep them feeding all season october late october it stinks like doe in here you're going to get bucks cruising they're going to want to check it out um and then even early season you know you got browse you got variety you're going to have deer so basically you know whatever you can do um to get browse on your property, it's going to bring cover on your property. That's going to bring deer. Really, no matter what size you got, if you got something different and someone around you, um, and it's high quality food, they're going to come in. You're going to hopefully see deer, and it's all about just increasing your odds. Like I said before, I mean, we're never going to be able to hold deer here 100% of the time. We've got a small property, but if we can bring them off the large hillside we got over there and make them bow around. 30 40 percent of the time that's just a greater odds that we see them you know on a friday night saturday morning or something or you know when we come up for a week in the rut but whatever you can do um, to promote that on your property you know that's something that you're going to want to do as deer hunters now um, we're as much land stewards you know as we are hunters we're trying to make make the properties as best we can 
because um, that's just going to draw more deer in. So, you know, grab that chainsaw, get it fired up, and don't be afraid to go cut some trees. Let some light in because that's just going to promote that growth. And it's going to promote it quick. I mean, two or three years, you can start seeing knee-high growth, and that's all, you know, great browse for deer. That's great cover. And uh, the more light you can get in, the more heavy light you can get during summer. Um, I'm talking, you know, four or five hours a day. That's going to push pickers heavy. Um, that's going to create great, great cover, great browse. So grab the chainsaw, start cutting trees. Um, be safe with it. Be smart with it. Um, if you take a season to see where your sun tracks during the day, um, you know, mark out what kind of trees you want to take down. You know, it's going to save a lot of work because we're, you know, for the most part, it's two of us doing it at a time, whether it's me and my dad, me and Jake, him and his dad. Um, you know, and it takes takes days to do it. Um, you know, and we only got so much energy in a day, so much time. So, um, you know, if you can pinpoint what trees you want to take down and, uh, you know, not just cutting willy-nilly up on the hill, taking everything down, you know, that's a lot of extra work. But if you can pinpoint certain trees, work around certain trees, um, we like to target ash right now because the ash borer got to the ones on our hillside. We probably have about 10 um, but that's a natural opening where the sun can come down. So if we expand those areas a little bit, um, that's a little less work that we have to do to get a good result, get some good hot sun down there during the summer. Um, and that's where we like to focus some of our tree plantings, some of our bush plantings, especially the ones that we bought, because um, you're paying you know, money for those. You really got to pick and choose where you put them, try to put them in the best position possible. Um, we fell into that trap early. We got a bunch of pines, just threw them out in the woods. Um, didn't really provide any holes for them, any sunlight, and we have three left, and those are growing right behind the cabin. Um, so, you know, that was kind of a little bit of a waste there. It was a learning experience. Um, you know, you go out, you buy stuff from nurseries. You got to kind of baby that stuff, get it established, and then you can kind of let it go, let it start creating thickets, um, you know, once you get those openings in that sunlight. So, um, you know, that's just a little bit of our thought process, what we like to do, um, and what we're thinking, you know, up in the mountains up here. Um, and kind of what we know that our deer like to do. Um, so, you know, if it helped you out at all, you know, you learned something or, you know, you do similar things, you know, comment on the video. Let us know what you do. Let us know where you're from. Um, hit the thumbs up button. You can hit that red subscribe button if you want to see more content from us. Um, we got trout season right around the corner, so we're going to be doing some fishing soon. Hopefully next weekend we'll be up doing some March beaver trapping um, so we can get a video out of that. And then... Um, a little over a month from now, we'll be hitting the turkey woods. We did hear some gobble this morning. Um, we had a nice sunny morning. Um, it was cold, but it was clear, um, and it warmed up, and they were firing up to some crow calls. We've seen a couple jakes come through the yard this morning, um, so they're starting to do their thing just a little bit. Um, so that's all kinds of stuff that we'll be doing. So make sure to look out for that. Um, we should be posting pretty consistently. Well, we're up here in one of the pockets we just created. Um, we got a big brush pile behind us of everything that we cut. Um, let's say we probably got a 20-yard circle surrounding us. We have a big dead ash tree to our back corner. Uh, we took some striped maples out. That's laying on the brush pile. They get big leaves. So we wanted to get those down, get some sunlight in here. And we really think we got a good pocket um, that we can introduce some pickers to and get some good growth up here. And what I was talking about before and in some other videos about getting pickers into these brush piles and let the brush pile kind of act as a cage. Um, we got a picker that we transplanted from down at our cabin. Um, we have a mix, blackberries, raspberries um, that we put up here. So the hope is that we'll keep this on the edge. It'll hide it a little bit from the deer, um, but they always make a way of finding it. So they probably will find this main stalk. Um, but what it's going to do is send out roots and you'll get suckers coming off those roots so hopefully they'll go into the brush pile they'll rise up and we can get them growing out through the center of the brush pile maybe get you know four or five foot tall get some big bushes um, to create cover and the deer can eat and feed on this stuff on the edge but we'll be able to maintain that big dome of cover in the center to break up the line of view and eventually this brush pile will rot out and hopefully we'll be left with um, some big pockets of pickers in here but that's just a great way to create some browse, create some cover, and protect the stuff that you're putting in because it takes time, it takes energy, and when you're only doing it mostly on a Saturday with two guys, 
you know, it's a lot to do, so you want to make the best effort you can when you're transplanting and moving this stuff around. Look out through, you can see some of the brush piles through there. Taking out your line of sight. Probably goes 70 yards that direction, but these brush piles busted up into 20, 30 yard pieces. Left little corridors in between. Hopefully the deer want to start to use those to weave in between the brush piles before our pickers that we planted and before some of our uh, other bushes and trees come in before we get those planted. We got a little bit of cover in the meantime. Hopefully get them using the hillside a little and then give them the goods. Another good day of cutting. Yeah, I guess. Wear me yeah. out. <laughs> Not so, too bad. We probably cut between this week and last week 200 trees down. Nothing huge, but four or five inch rounders. Yeah, we probably. The heck of pecs. Yeah, probably even up to like 12, 15 inches yeah, we took. Yeah, probably were some of them. A lot of them. Made, like I said, made them into brush piles. And just playing out a couple. Crown jewels. Yep, crown jewels. Secrets. But can't emphasize it enough. You want deer, you need cover, you need brows. Yep. You need them seclusion. Take out their line of sight. That's what they want. We don't really need water. We got a creek and there's a couple ponds around, so that's not such a big deal for no. our hill. But no, we got plenty of water. Thick and brows. Need to eat a couple pounds of it a day. They don't like to see far. They don't need to see for. They don't like it. They like when they can just blend in. 20 yards, that's all they need to see. They know they can't see, nothing can see them. But they'll smell and hear it coming. So, well, uh, hopefully in two years we see the improvement. Because we got a lot of stuff to plant that's going to be coming probably within the next three to four weeks. From Wisconsin, and we got stuff from New York, and stuff from Pennsylvania, Western PA coming, different trees and different shrubs. So, Gonna be sticking them in. I guess we'll show you that. And then show you what it looks like in July. Yep. <laughs> Hopefully it works out. Yeah. Well, do a lot of cutting now, and that's just a waiting game.